In the windy months, March, April, May, we make our bamboo and paper kites, play them in the pleasant breeze as all our playmates do. And you cannot imagine the fun, plain ones, fancy ones, silent ones, singing ones, big ones, small ones, and sizes in between, rainbow colors, bright, bright colors, rivaling the stained glass windows of the old church on the hill, catching the light of the bright, bright sun, kites with long, long tails of cloth rags or discarded neckties strung together, kites dipping and swaying, playing, twisting, turning gently in concert with the wind as the line strains, stiffens, and sags. The breeze holds them aloft for hours, dances them now this way and that, dancing, sailing, dancing, holding the guiding, tugging strings our fantasies take wings, soaring with our pretty paper treasures. Boyhood thoughts drift with them to realms of princes, palaces, and kings, and we dream of many wonderful things. That is a poem from Easton Lee, one of our Jamaican wonderful poets. Good morning, friends. <laughs> and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And to those who are listening to us on the World Wide Web, welcome to sunny, very hot Jamaica. <laughs> but we love it. Do you remember flying kites as a child? It was magical to allow the wind to catch the kite and watch it playfully carry it far, far, up, up and away till it was but a speck in the sky. There is a joyful abandon in the kite as we roll out the string and with a running start let it soar. Now my cousin Nev was the kite maker in the family. And it fascinated me that he could, with a few sticks and some pretty tissue paper, make the most wonderful kite with rags of cloth. Now this is much like our lives. We can create magic with a few scraps, lots of imagination, and joyous expectation. So my talk this morning is titled, Go Fly a Kite. <laughs> Our Declaration of Principles states, the manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. Now, if I were to say to you, we are God also, would you feel uncomfortable? Would it sound blasphemous? Well, think about it. If we individualize the qualities of God, which we must do if we are created in the image likeness of the divine, then we are God also. We are a way for God to be in this universe through the persons, circumstances, and experiences we present. And God is having a whale of a time. There are so many ways to express and experience life. There are innocent babies and rumbunctious teenagers. Hardened criminals and pious priests, loose women and prim church sisters, lawyers, doctors, Indian chiefs, successful bankers and bankrupt business people, sly politicians and kind hearted nuns, sly nuns and kind hearted politicians. You get the picture. It's all God. From the gnat to the whale, the hummingbird to the John Crow lemons to sweet mangoes, poison ivy to delicate roses, hurricanes and gentle breezes, it's all God, infinite, limitless. Life is without fear or favor. God is without fear or favor. We set the boundaries of our liberty. So it's not trespassing to decide to go beyond our own self-imposed limitations. That's called growth. <laughs> I recently had a conversation with Dr. Carol Carnes about purpose. And she said, you know, 
So many people are bent out of shape about finding their purpose. The only purpose we have is to be. To be ourselves, our own individual, beautiful, wonderful, unique selves. That's it. The only reason we are put on this earth is to experience life. To have life be experienced through us. We each bring something special to life that can only be delivered by us. And we bring that gift as us. We are the gift. Now knowing that, we ought to concentrate on giving the best we have to each other and to the world, to life itself. When we give the gift of ourselves freely, with complete abandon, letting go of all the strings that tightly bind us, societal strings, morality strings, other people's opinion strings, our own doubts and fear strings. When we let go of all of that, we release the divine gifts within us to soar to new heights of self-expression. Only when we have learned to live life with no strings attached, giving all we are to life in every moment. Only then will we be in a position to receive all. So my question to you is, how ready are you to receive? Whatever need we have has already been filled. Thou preparest a table before me, and my cup runneth over. But in order to partake of the bounty, we have to step up and help ourselves. The taking is ours to do. And it doesn't matter how much you take, because your taking cannot and will not diminish what's available for anyone else. We are part of an infinitely abundant life. So if I feel that I want to be giddy with joy and happiness right now in excess, is that going to stop you from being happy and joyful? No. If everybody in this room was to breathe in all the air our lungs could hold, would that stop someone in Timbuktu from having enough air? No, of course not. Dr. Merritt Jones, writing in an earlier edition of the Science of Mind magazine, said, and I quote, whoever said the sky is the limit must not have realized that it is not the sky that limits us, but our perception of the sky, end quote. What if we could see all of life as good, every experience simply as God expressing? Why shouldn't we be able to find joy in everything, even in the not so pleasant experiences? Perhaps because we're too busy judging and criticizing and trying to fix people, places, and circumstances. Now that's a hard pill to swallow. But in truth, we're either judging or we're accepting. You can't do both. We're either judging out of fear or we're accepting out of faith and love. Emerson reminds us that we need to get our egos out of the way. He calls it our bloated nothingness. And our ego is our chief judge and jury. Now God, that infinite indwelling spirit, is seeking to look out through our eyes. So we need to take off the blinkers and allow ourselves to see as God sees, without limits. It is we who limit the gift by not being open to receive. Every desire that we have is ultimately toward a single goal, to make us recognize and realize, as in make real in our experience, our oneness with life, our innate wholeness. So what could cause us to be unreceptive? Dr. Ernest Holmes has said, and I quote, each receives what he asks for according to his ability to embody. 
Put another way, we don't get what we ask for. We get what we think we deserve. It is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and the kingdom represents everything our hearts desire, as long as it harms no one. But if our bucket is already full of dirt and mud, we could dip into the most abundant well, we won't come up with much water. Raymond Charles Barker, writing in his book, The Power of Decision, says, and I quote, already in our own mind are the right ideas seeking your right thinking to become cause to your inner and outer happiness. Ideas, not facts are the hope of your world. And these ideas are already resident in your present mind. And you couldn't have the idea if it wasn't a possibility. So think for a minute. Is there something right now that you would love to have, to be, to do, but feel you can't or you don't know how? The good news is you don't have to know how. But you do need to decide if it's really what you want and go for it. Allow it to be present in your experience. And this begins first in mind. If you have a pen, I want you to write these words down. It's a little song that I want you to sing with me. It's easy, easy tune, and you've heard it before too. I give myself permission to be all I can be. I give myself permission to live passionate and free. And those words are from Ricky Byers Beckwith. You want to tell you again? Yes. I give myself permission to be all I can be. I give myself permission to live passionate and free. And here's the tune. I give myself permission to be all I can be. I give myself permission to live passionate and free. Think you can do that? I give myself permission to be all I can be. I give myself permission to live passionate and free. I give myself permission to be all I can be. I give myself permission to live passionate and free. You like it? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Here's an affirmation for you. I am established in the awareness that I live and move and have my being in a sea of infinite possibilities. Now, some of you may remember, almost a year ago to the date, I spoke right here about a trip I was supposed to take and how consumed with fear and trepidation I was when the plans were put on hold. I discovered feelings of unworthiness still lurking, trying to convince me I didn't deserve a dream vacation. Well, look at me now. <laughs> I recently returned from said trip, which was the absolute best vacation I ever had. What made it so fabulous? The places I visited? Yes. The people I was with? Sure. The experiences we shared? Absolutely. But more than that, what really made the difference was the me that I brought to the experience. It certainly was not the fear-riddled, doubt-laden person who was in a panic the year before. No. Having identified the fears a year earlier, I made a conscious decision to let go of the old, worn-out ideas that were holding me hostage and keeping me from diving enthusiastically into life with joyous abandon. It took me a year to get ready, but how long really is quite irrelevant because we know nothing happens before it's time. You cannot have a new experience while thinking the same old thoughts. And you'll discover when you decide to change the thoughts that the old thoughts can be very resistant to change. 
But no matter how stubborn those old thoughts are, you are infinitely stronger. You, all of us, have access to infinite intelligence, but you have to be willing to use it. The moment you make a decision, and I do mean a decision, not a wish, but a decision to change, the old patterns begin to disintegrate, to give up the ghost and fade away. But if we don't fill up on new ideas that are more aligned with our desires, the cunning old ideas will find a way to seep back in. So I'm going to share with you some of the tools I use to get past the fears and into my amazing vacation. When we're shifting focus, when we're changing our minds, we're in a creative process. And you know, it's, it's interesting that Vance's reading this morning was about the creative process. We didn't discuss this. Okay? He had no idea what I was talking about. I had no idea what he was going to read. But that's how mind works. I've identified seven mental faculties we engage in the creative process. And by the way, these apply no matter what it is that you are creating. First, imagination. This, to my mind, is the kingdom of heaven that's referred to in the Bible. Because with this faculty, there is no limit to what is possible. Two, intuition. It's that gut feeling, our internal GPS, that tells us whether or not we're on the right track. Three, will. This is a function of conscious mind, which allows us to stay focused once we make that decision. Four, willingness and faith. Now, I remember Michael Bernard Beck was saying, where there's a will, there's a wall. Where there's a willingness, there's a way. So willingness and faith work in tandem through acceptance and assurance of the good that awaits. Five, reason. This is the power to effectively analyze and evaluate so we don't go off half-cocked, but work with wisdom. Six, perception and awareness. Staying alert to what's happening within, that's the perception, and around us, that's the awareness, so that we can make adjustments as necessary. And seven, flexibility. The ability to stay open to a better way than you may have envisioned. We are, after all, dealing with an infinite intelligence. Now, these are not difficult things, but they do require consistent practice because you are creating a new way of thinking. Here's another affirmation for you that I used for the year that I was getting myself ready. The way before me is clear and is filled with joy and harmony. <laughs> and now I want you to consider this one from today. I greet each day with love, joy, and laughter. Say that. I greet each day with love, joy, and laughter. <laughs> Say what? The way before me is clear and is filled with joy and harmony. So now that I've got you in the right frame of mind, out beyond the edge of reason, there is a wide open meadow with endless skies. Meet me there and bring your kite. Have a beautiful day, wonderful rest of the week. Namaste.